Good morning and welcome to Configuring Safe, Legal and Efficient Trucks with the Truck Science Axle Weight Calculator. Truck Science partnered with NTA in 2019 to provide members with the next level solution, calculating axle weights. We extend a special welcome to NTA members joining us this morning. My name is Sarah O'Grady and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Truck Science. I know lots of you are already using the program, while many of you are seeing it for the first time today. So I hope that all of you will pick up something worthwhile from today's session. Let's talk a little bit about truck design. There are so many factors to be considered, including stage regulations for the particular configuration, including axles, tires, etc., and potentially for more than one state, if the vehicle will be operated across states or if the vehicle will be sold on. We need to think about OEM or manufacturer ratings. We need to think about payload capacity and maximizing it. We need to think about right-sizing the truck to reduce fuel consumption. We want to avoid undue maintenance or rework. And we need to be mindful of rollover stability through, through keeping the center of gravity as low as possible. We need to think about turning radius, especially for our, say, garbage trucks that need to be turned in a cul-de-sac. And we need to make sure that axle weight distribution supports safe steering and braking. And you may have many more items on your checklist as stipulated by your organization. We'll touch on many of these considerations when we get into the live demo now in just a moment. So here's just a little snapshot of what we'll cover today. I'm going to take you through a short live demo of the Truck Science Axle Weight Calculator. I'm going to show you how to set up your preferences for measurement, whether that be imperial or metric, uh, how to choose the regulations that should be applied, how to define measurements, your favorite measurements or watch points, we like to call them, how to use the Truck Science Library to find pre-populated specs of vehicles, bodies, equipment, and even payload items. I'll show you how to input your information and how to import custom drawings from DXF files. We'll check compliance against OEM limits and regulations and help you to realize your vehicle's payload potential. We'll briefly touch on center of gravity, static rollover angle and turning radius. I'll show you how to generate a sign off document and how to share your designs with other users of the program. Lastly, I'll show you where to find help if you ever get stuck. So I'm going to share my screen with you now uh, so that you can follow along as I use the program. So you just firstly log in via this uh, login button on truckscience.com. Um, and then once you're into the app, you can use the, this button to go full screen, just to take advantage of all the screen size. You'll notice that I'm using a genetically modified mouse, so you can follow it as it moves around the screen. So please just bear with me um, if I struggle to push it around. So first things first, when we want to start a new calculation, we must first choose a vehicle. We're gonna choose a Ford here from the manufacturer specs. And you can browse by brand and range like Super Duty, 4x4, or you can search or filter the list just by typing, say, for, for example, 550 with a regular cab. You can sort by CA. And I'm going to just choose this Ford F550 diesel with a CA of 84 inches to accommodate an 11 foot service body. While your calculations will vary a lot, uh, you'll go through the same process to input information and produce outputs every time. We're going to use the left-hand side of the screen here to input information about the vehicle, the body, equipment items, and payload items, and indeed trailers below. We use this dashboard here to verify compliance with firstly manufacturer ratings, regulation limits, and your own organization standards. And it's also used to display what we call your favorite measurements. So these are something, things that maybe you like to see, but other users don't. So we, we allow you to add or remove them in that way. 
The weights table you will, will use to see detailed weight distribution and compliance information and to determine the maximum achievable payload. Because this vehicle does not yet have a body, the current maximum achievable payload is zero pounds. We'll, we'll see how that changes in just a moment. On the right-hand side, you can switch views between uh, side view and top view and these uh, various other views, including bridge, center of gravity and turning radius. And along the top, we have uh, facilities to print, save or share your calculations and indeed to define your preferences. We get to all of those in a moment. Let's start adding components first. When deciding whether to add an item as a body, equipment or payload, we just consider the following guidelines. A body has payload capacity and equipment does not. Equipment is permanently attached to the vehicle, whereas payload is loaded on and off. So we'll add a body first with the second icon here. You can choose from these predefined categories or you can use the other category if your body category is not shown. We're going to add a service body. Service bodies are saved. We have uh, truck science templates. I've got items saved in my personal library, items that I've shared with my team in my team library, or we've got this public library, which all users can see. So I can search the public library for say a reading body and add that to my drawing. Once the body is added, I can click on it to open the body menu. Because this is a standard spec from Reading, a regular user does not have permission to change length, height or width dimensions, but you can change or override the standard weight and center of gravity. An upfitter may choose to add a standard body like this, whereas a body manufacturer might like to experiment with body design. We provide templates for that, which we'll get to now in a moment. If you are a body manufacturer and you want to have your bodies available to approve distributors and upfitters within the program, please just reach out to us to arrange this for you. I'm going to remove this body now with the scissors. You can see that the, I can open this body menu either from the left-hand side here or simply by clicking on the body. I can also open it by clicking on the weight of the body. It will, it will show me where, that, where I can change that. Let's move, remove it all. Now this time I'm going to use a truck science template to experiment with body design. Templates have more generic drawings. They offer much greater flexibility in terms of what I can edit. So you can see I can edit the length, height, width here and weight and center of gravity information. These templates come with sensible default values for weights and dimensions. We'll get back to editing that in a moment. But now is a good time to point out these color coded indicators beneath the drawing. The compliance scorecard on the left indicates if manufacturer ratings, bridge weights have been exceeded or if your own organization standards are not being met. These green ticks indicate that everything is good so far. We can open this settings, the, we can click on this little icon here to open, this, open the settings dialog to customize this dashboard. First, we want to choose the regulations that are applied to our calculations. If I click here and clear the list, then I can scroll or search for the relevant states, say California, Illinois, or Texas, or indeed I can choose all three. You can choose up to five at once. I'll just search for California here. If I click into my regular compliance now, I can see that it's California federal regulations that are being applied to my calculations. This area on the bottom half of the dashboard contains what we call our favorite measurements. I've added percentage weight on the front axle, as well as the overall center of gravity for the vehicle. You can choose yours here. If I click on the cog again, go to favorite measurements, Again, you can scroll that list and choose whichever favorite measurements you'd like to be added to your dashboard. You can also define your organization standards. So if I click on that cog or indeed the matching one up here, 
I can choose which organization standards should be applied. These are limits that are not covered by either uh, regulations for your state or the OEM spec for the vehicle, but which your organization has put in place or likes to adhere to with the aim of delivering safe and efficient vehicles. An example of this is to specify a maximum of 20% weight on the front axle to ensure that the vehicle can be steered and stopped safely. And I've already added that here. These can be toggled on and off with these checkboxes. I have another one here for tongue weight, which isn't relevant to this calculation, so I've it toggled off. The weights table shows the breakdown of weights per component in the rows and across axles in the columns. It also shows this maximum achievable payload for the current setup, highlighted in blue here. The unused capacity row shows any capacity that is being left on the table, so to speak. When the total column shows a utilization of 100%, you can rest assured that you are realizing the total payload potential of this vehicle. The blue text in the weights table or on the drawing indicates clickable shortcut. So if I click on this body length dimension here in blue, it will open the menu, a menu where I can change the body length to say 133. I can also just pop that menu in with these double arrows to edit the rest of the body attributes. You'll notice that as I make changes to the body dimensions, that the graphic and weights table updates on the fly. So I've already changed the length, but if I change the height from say 40 to 38, the graphic responds. We can also update the body weight. So I can click on it here. We can, we can update the body material weight here from 120 pounds per foot to 91 pounds per foot or I can choose to specify it as an absolute value in pounds. If I reduce the weight of the body, you'll notice that the payload, the maximum payload will probably increase uh, by the same rate since we're, the limiting factor is the total weight of the vehicle. So if I just uh, reduce the weight of the body here, you'll notice that the maximum payload figure is increasing. And I can undo and redo the most recent changes using this, these buttons. So you'll notice the payload will change again accordingly. Let's add some equipment now. So we have these menus on the left, vehicle, body, and equipment. I'm going to select a crane to add a crane. Again, I can search the public library, say for a brand like Liftmore, and add their crane. You'll see now that the crane's weight has been included in the total unladen weight. If I hover over the crane until it becomes blue, I can click and drag it. Watch how the weights change on the front and rear axles as this crane is moved forward and backwards. Next, I'm going to add a generator. Again, this is equipment that stays on the vehicle. And since we don't have a generator category, I'm just going to choose other. And I can search library for a Lincoln generator, Lincoln Electric, which is also a partner of NTA. Again, you'll see that the weight of the generator has been added to the total unladen weight. I can uh, again hover to grab it, but it's a little bit tricky since it's behind the body, or I can just go back to the equipment menu, select the crane, and manually type in the position as four inches from the back of cab and 26 inches above or below above the chassis. If you prefer to specify the position of equipment relative to the front axle, you'll find this preference in settings. Go to settings, preferences, and I can specify the body position relative to the back of cab or front axle. And the same with this equipment, I can specify equipment position relative to the front axle. So 
to override this uh, this generator's weight and center of gravity, just click on it, go to weight. And you can just override, check the override box and set the weight to say 432 and maybe the horizontal center of gravity to 45%. Again, you can specify this in absolute terms in inches. If you want to see the detailed position and dimension attributes for a piece of equipment, you can just toggle these on and off using this little pin icon. And you'll see that I have toggled on the detailed dimensions for the generator relative to the front axle um, and position, position relative to the body. If I click on the generator again, I can just unpin those dimensions. We could add a step and some outriggers and other items, but I'm just going to carry on, skip those for now uh, to save time. We notice, as I mentioned earlier, if, you're, if your utilization for the total is at 100%, you know that you're using the total payload capacity of the vehicle. But if the one of the axles had shown a capacity, or a utilization of 100%, and another had shown a significant unused capacity, this would represent an opportunity to gain payload, payload by moving some items around. So I'm just going to temporarily exaggerate the weight of this generator now to illustrate this point. I don't remember if I go to the weight tab for the generator, I had overridden it to 432. I'm just going to override that to 4,000 pounds. Now straight away, we can see that the front axle is being fully utilized, but there is an unused capacity of over 4,500 pounds on the rear axle, and our payload has dropped significantly to just 2,000 pounds. But watch what happens when I shift this generator ever so slightly towards the rear. So now you'll notice that we've, this has resulted in a much more even utilization spread. There's 99% on the front, 84% on the rear. And we've reached the holy grail of having 100% total utilization. And our payload has more than doubled with just that little tweak of the position of that generator. So we're always looking to, to realize the full potential of the vehicle in terms of payload. And to do that, we need to make sure that it's the total uh, permissible weight of the vehicle that's the limiting factor and not one of the axles. Now, so um, you've seen that the information is basically input on the left-hand side, and you've got these output views on the right-hand side. We've got, we're currently in side view, we, we can toggle that to top view. And then we can click on these compartments to specify the width, the uh, compartment depth of say 25 inches. And we can drag the, the, uh, the equipment laterally. So I'm going to take the generator over here to the um, roadside or driver's side and the crane to the curbside. This obviously has an impact on the um, rollover stability of the vehicle as well, the lateral distribution. I'm just going to undo this uh, generator weight before I forget. So I had set that to 4,000 pounds. I just want to unoverride it back to the original weight of 448. And I'll just switch back to the side view again. So you've got your side arrow here on the right. Now we have a proposal to agree with the customer. We've got over 8,000 pounds of payload and the vehicle GVWR is 18,000 pounds. So to send this design to our draftsman to get a more realistic body drawing, remember we were just using a template to experiment with the body design. I'm going to save the calculation. Uh, 
and I can call it NTA webinar. April 22. And now I can share it, share the entire calculation with another user of the program. So I can send this to say draftsman, my company. I can add some comments. No depth, uh, compartment depth. And of course I can copy myself on this invitation. Just going to take a quick break to check if uh, Jens has any questions. Hi, Sergey, we've had a few questions, um, but I think uh, either you or I have answered them sufficiently. First question was around electric trucks, whether we, whether we support electric trucks. And uh, the answer is we do. Um, you know, this is an axle weight calculator, so you can import uh, your own components, whether they be batteries or uh, whatever other equipment you need on your electric trucks, you can import that as a DXF file and place them on the vehicle as Sarek has done with, with the crane or the generator um, and so forth. Um, the, the, another question was around um, the static rollover angle, uh, whether that measurement assumes a rigid vehicle model and the answer is yes, it does assume a rigid, a rigid vehicle model, so we do not in, um, take into account the, the effects of the suspension. Um, the third question was uh, around whether we typically, or whether we cater for items inside a van, such as partitioning, uh, shelving, ramps, etc. cetera. Um, and again, the answer there is yes, we can, uh, as you're able to import your own equipment by DXF. So you can import your own partitioning, shelving, ramps, et cetera and place them on the vehicle uh, horizontally, vertically, and laterally. So, um, and I see uh, there's a question that's just come in here um, asking, why is the center of gravity so far back? Um, now, I'm not sure is that the center of gravity, I don't know, sorry, could you maybe toggle to the center of gravity view there? Um, and we can, we can see what, uh, I'll say that center of gravity is referring to the body, that's the body center of gravity, not the overall vehicle center of gravity. So um, on that uh, center of gravity view, you can see the overall center of gravity is further forward. So I suspect that might uh, be the answer to your question um, there, David. But that's, uh, that's it for now. And just to elaborate on that question, so the overall center of gravity is automatically pinned in this center of gravity view but I can pin center of gravity points for any of the other items that are equipment or body. So, uh, you know, it gets quite cluttered, obviously, if you pin them all, and that's why they're not pinned by default. There's a payload center of gravity, body center of gravity, and so on. Um, driver center of gravity. Um, so you can you pin as many or as few of those on there as you'd like. So I'm just going to switch back to um, the details. And maybe while we're... While we're on these views, um, I can just quickly show you show you some of the other views. Um, we've got a bridge view here, it just shows you the detailed breakdown of, of the axle groups um, and pertaining to the bridge bridge regulations. We've just seen the center of gravity view. We've also got a turning radius view, which shows you the smallest circle in which this truck can turn. Um, and we've the side and and uh, top, as we already saw, detailed and a more simplified view, and then the static rollover angle that uh, was mentioned there in the questions. This vehicle static rollover angle is 43 degrees. Um, okay, I'll just go back to this side view. So um, after some time has elapsed then, obviously, and you've received a drawing back from your draftsman, you can replace this uh, body template with the drawing of the, the actual drawing of the body. So if I just click on this body to remove it again with the scissors, and this time when I go to add a service body, instead of choosing uh, what we just did now, which was a template or the, we had already chosen that, that body from the public library, this time we're going to import a DXF. So you choose a file from your desktop, uh, just got a sample file here. 
just drive you you know position at the at the zero zero if there's something protruding at the front but that, that doesn't apply here um and then we start uh, we can specify dimensions so remember we had a length of 133 the body length and um, the height is automatically um scaled from the drawing but we have a couple of other dimensions here to put in and then we can give it a width of say 94 inches. And remember we had those compartments of 25 inches. We can give it a weight. And again, we can give it in, we can give this weight in pounds per foot or just outright in, in pounds. So we give it a weight of 997. You can, uh, edit the the centers of the center of gravity points horizontal vertical and lateral as well and define a payload center of gravity which is more relevant to other type of bodies um, and then we just want to give it a script description so let's call it like my service body 2204 or something and um, we save and add that to the drawing Um, so now if I go back and click onto this imported body, I can save that to my team library so that my colleagues can reuse it in future. So it's already got the name I gave it. This time I can save it to the team library. Uh, and this way it'll be available to be in that, um, you know, when you go to add service body, it'll be in the team library for, for anyone on your team. As a body, body manufacturer, you might want to ask Truck Science to promote it to the public library. Um, but that's hidden by default um so that yeah if you don't if you don't want to do that um that's fine too so you can use and, and indeed you can save it to your personal library if you don't want to share it to the rest of your team okay so up to now we had been uh using the default simple payload this um the optimum maximum payload, which has been automatically uh, generated based on everything else we did. So as I said, as you move things around the payload, if the utilization would move to one of the other axles, the payload would start to drop. Okay, this is, it's not misbehaving for me. <laughs> um, anyway, let's switch to, we're going to go to detailed payload. And this is how we define uh, point loads. So you can open the payload dialog by just clicking on this payload figure here or using the payload icon on the left. We're gonna switch this up to detailed payload. And now we're going to add a payload item. So again, you've got truck science templates, items that you've saved in your personal library, your team library, items that have been saved to the public library, or again, indeed you can import a DXF file again. This time we're just going to add a truck science template when we've added that, you can hover to highlight it in blue, then click to edit, and or you could open it from the left-hand side like we did earlier. You can give it a recognizable name like maybe tools and edit the dimensions. So say for instance, 32, 32 by 23. We can change the position to move it in a little bit from the edges, two inches, two inches, two inches. And we want to give it a weight of say 750 pounds. Uh, so now you'll see that our total payload figure here has dropped 750 because we've got this, what we call detailed payload, detailed payload items. And this one item weighs 750. But let's see what would happen if we accidentally type 7,500. Now we've run into some compliance issues. The scorecard flags issues with the manufacturer ratings with our red X and the weights table shows that the front axle is overloaded. The front axle itself is also indicating that there's an issue with the front axle. So let's review where this front axle limit comes from. If I click on this permissible 6,500 for the overloaded axle, you'll see that the gross axle weight rating as defined by Ford for this vehicle is 6,500. The regulation limit in California for this configuration is 20,000. And so the permissible is the lesser of the GAWR and the bridge limit. Now, upgrading an axle can sometimes make a problem like this go away. So let's re-rate the axle to 8,000. 
and everything is back in the green. However, we can't simply just do that because we wish to. So I'm going to re revert back to 6,500. And we are going to solve this problem instead by just dragging the tools towards the rear of the vehicle. As you know, placement is extremely important when, when getting a weight distribution right. So as the front axle weight decreases, as I drag these tools rearward, and the rear axle weight increases, as you can see in the table below, we're going to reach a sweet spot at which no axles are overloaded, right there. So now our front axle is on 100% utilization, but we, we no longer have an issue. If we go too far back then, You see the utilization is creeping up here, 98, 99, 100. So too far back is uh, just as bad as too far forward. Um, so we can let go of that one and then we can just use the undo button to bring it back to, this, to where we said was the sweet spot at which we weren't overloaded. So remember that blue values are shortcuts. Uh, so we can use the payload link on the drawing to update the weight of this payload item, because remember we mistakenly made it uh, 7,500 and I just want to switch that back to 750. Okay, we're going to quickly add a trailer before I move on, just so you can see that. Um, first I need to add a hitch. So I'm going to go to equipment, pintle hook, coupler, and I'll just go to, um, I think there's one here, a sample medium hitch. And then I go to trailer one. And I, I realize that this is quite uh, quick, but I just want to put on a trailer just to show you um, hitch load and that kind of thing. So I'm going to add this center axle drawbar trailer with beaver tail. Um, and then again, I can specify, we've got four new icons here for a trailer, a trailer body, trailer equipment, and trailer payload. So if I click on the trailer payload, again, I can switch that to a detailed load rather than a simple load. And I'm going to add a um, bobcat. Now you can see that the tongue weight or hitch load is expressed as a percentage of the total trailer weight. That's the trailer and its payload. And if I drag the, the bobcat forward or backwards, we'll increase or decrease that tongue weight. So again, that's something you should talk to your hitch manufacturer about and how much weight uh, the hitch is rated to carry. If we want to center the bobcat laterally, we just switch to the top view again. And then back again to the side view. So you'll be able to explore these views in, in more detail in your own time, but I'm just going to give you that quick look at them again. So we've got this overview vehicle summary, which is a detailed breakdown of the vehicle unladen weights. We've got the bridge view, which compares the actual weight on each, each axle group with the permissible weights as per bridge law. And this becomes more relevant, obviously, the more axles there are. Uh, we've got that center of gravity view that we were already in, and you can choose to um, pin any that are of interest to the drawing. We obviously pinned a lot of them on earlier. We can unpin them now too, before you might want to export this view to a PDF. And I showed you the smallest circle in which we could turn, which again becomes um, more tricky with the trailer, of course. You can review the notes and warnings to see the stat over, static rollover angle of both the vehicle and the trailer. So go back to the side view. If you want to export the current view to a PDF uh, document customized with your logo, you click on this PDF icon up the top here. The PDF includes a sign off area at the bottom here, and you can print, download, or email that PDF to your customer or any other stakeholders. There are, there, you can include more or less detail um, 
uh, with, with these checkboxes on the left hand side here. You can also add extra notes um, either company wide or just to this calculation here. So uh, yeah, that's bit, you know I guess everything you do kind of up to this point is is to to generate this PDF and have something that you can agree on, in, on paper that this is what what you're going to build or this is what you've what you've discussed. If you get stuck at any time while you're using the tool, you can just simply reach out to us using this chat icon in the bottom right. Um, you can send us a message here, and and one of us will be will be right back to you. Um, you can also choose to share your, your screen with us through that chat if, to, if you wish to receive uh, um, old fashioned over the shoulder kind of help. We can, we can see what you're doing and uh, help, you, help you get it right. So maybe before I close that calculation, I'll just check in with Jens to see um, if we've got any more questions that I can address. The interface. Nice here. We've had we've had a good few questions. Um, the latest one, I'm just busy typing an answer for. The question was, do we cater for lift axles for dump trucks? And the answer is yes, we we definitely do. And uh, you can add pusher and tag axles um, and ensure compliance, bridge compliance, in nearly all states. Uh, we're just finishing up um, the last remaining uh, states. So yeah, um, the other questions that I've had are relating to uh, trucks, the number of trucks that are available. There's a question about class two trucks. So the answer again is you can, um, you can request, if your truck isn't in our database, which uh, you know, our database is increasing all the time, but if, if your truck isn't, isn't present, you can request the data team to add that for you at no extra, extra cost. Um, Another question about trailers, multi-axle trailers and pup trailers. Yes, we do cater for those. And then uh, there's a question about negative numbers. Uh, for example, the crane that was exerting a negative force on the front axle, which of course is not uh, an issue as long as the overall force on the front axle isn't negative or isn't, isn't less than say 20% of, uh, of the gross weight. Um, so that's it. I see a good few more questions coming in, but I'll I'll uh, I'll hand back to you anyway. So again, I'll I'll answer them. Okay. So I'm conscious that um, of time, but I'm just going to quickly open a, a a dump truck just in a matter of moments here. So I can uh, reset this. Um, I'm going to just open a Volvo six by four. Uh, let's see this one. Um, I can add a dump body on there. And again, I can choose one from the public library, see what this one is like, or I can import one. Okay, that one, I'm going to just uh, cut that one, add a template. And I'm just going to quickly add a lift axis so you can see what happens to our payload. And let's just, uh, I'm going to clear this and switch to say Texan regulations, and then I'll add a lift axle. So if I go back into the vehicle menu and go to weights and axles, and I can click on this plus and add a pusher. So our current payload is at 22,751 pounds. And when we add the pusher, we're up to 29,508. Uh, and then you've got this, the bridge breakdown is, this view is obviously more relevant um, when you're dealing with a vehicle like this. Again, you can change the material of the body um, to say heavy duty steel. And these, all the, every change we make is going to affect um, payload, but this is, we've got 100% of the total vehicle capacity uh, used up here. So that's a good sign. Um, okay, so I'll just move on because I am conscious of time. Um, so we'll just go back out to that home screen again. And set this list. I just wanted to quickly show you in settings where to find everything. So in your dashboard, you choose the regulations applied. So we tried California and now we were, we were on uh, regulations for Texas. 
Um, you can also define those favorite measurements to appear on the dashboard. You remember that I had chosen two of those um, that I wanted to keep an eye on, but for instance, you could choose tongue weight as a percentage of trailer weight there as well. Um, and you define your organization standards. So maybe I've got some minimum and maximum acceptable values for the tongue weight. Uh, in measurement, you can switch between um, imperial and metric and change the the, uh, how much the dimensions are incremented by when you use the tickers in the app. If you go to preferences, you can specify whether you prefer to measure uh, cab dimensions in terms of front axle to back of cab or uh, bumper to back of cab. You can use wheelbase or cab to axle. Um, and I showed you already that you can specify body and equipment position relative to the front axle or the back of cab. And here is where you, um, upload your logo and you can specify company note, notes. Say for instance, we've got currently got a two month lead time or whatever you want in there and that'll be applied to all your calculations. Um, and in integrations, you can add your NTA membership details, which uh, will allow you to qualify for both a discount on your subscription and um, an extended free trial if you want to increase your initial free trial from seven days to 30 days, just add your username and password there. Um, okay, so that's all of the settings. I'll just go from bottom to top here quickly before we finish up. In the resources section, you'll find webinar recordings, including the re recording of this webinar um, later today or tomorrow. Um, you'll also find some useful documents uh, like the bodybuilder manuals and you'll find explainer videos. So we're adding to these all of the time. They're between two and four minutes long. And if you need help with say, importing a drawing or preparing your drawing for import uh, this is where you'll find that help uh, calculations shared with me you'll find calculations belonging to other users which they have chosen to share with you in the same way that i shared my calculation with this imaginary draftsman um, during my live demo so for, for privacy reasons i'm not going to open that because uh, there are named customers in there uh, my saved calculations, pretty self-explanatory. You can save them in as many folders, nested folders as you like here, rename them, organize them, all of that, and choose to share them from here as well. Um, and then lastly, when you're starting a new calculation, reset using this uh, X, you can search uh, manufacturer specs like I did for the Ford and the Volvo, or you can use a generic truck science template. So if we just go in here, four by four chassis cab, four by four conventional dual, um, dual wheel axles, uh, that is that one. And you'll see that this graphic is not as pretty, but there's much greater flexibility in terms of what you can edit uh, because it's not a standard manufacturer spec. So it might be the best option for you if you're in a hurry and what you want is not in our library. Um, and then lastly, if you need a vehicle that's not in the library, you're welcome to request it here using this form. And then we'd add it for you. So that wraps up the demo for today. So I'm going to quickly um, click back to my presentation. Or Jens, do you want to jump in with some more questions? Uh, I'm furiously answering all the questions here. There, there are a lot of them. Um, but if we don't get to answer all of them before the webinar finishes, I'll, uh, I'll get back in touch with those people individually. Um, what you could also do, uh, if you'd like us to get back in touch with you about setting up a demo or anything like that, feel free to post that in the Q&A section and, uh, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Okay, so uh, I know we've covered quite a lot in a short time. And as Jens said, if, if you'd like a personalized demo or a demo indeed for your team, we will gladly set that up for you. So you can reply to any of the emails you've received about the webinar or leave a note in the Q&A or what, whatever uh, takes your fancy. So if you're not already using uh, using Truck Science, um, you're welcome to take a free trial on our, our website, truckscience.com. Um, you can just click on start free trial there on the top right. And as I said, if you input your NTA membership details in your free trial, you it, the trial will be extended for 30 days. Um, and you'll also qualify for that NTA discount on checkout. And uh, that's 
that's it for me. I'm just going to end this webinar in a moment, Jens, if you don't want to hop, jump on with um, any questions. That's fine. I've I've got through all the questions. Okay. Um, so thank you for joining us and goodbye.